We test them in the adrenal recode to see, you know, kind of how deep is the nervous system dysfunction. And it's everything, to your point. It's how you move, how you breathe, how you think. What did you do throughout the day? And this is giving people the most powerful yet clinical intuitive nutrition possible because it's like how do you feel and how does your body respond when you do have what you need for yourself and what you don't have what you need for yourself and it's almost like allowing us to reparent ourselves collectively we are in this 21st century stress disease of chronic overwhelm chronic burnout like we're living off of stress hormones and we can't as a society, keep going the way that we've been going. That's Christo Recchio, and this is episode 299 of Wellness Force Radio. Wellness Force Radio, where we discover the physical and emotional intelligence to live life well. You can have the same brain states as someone who's done an hour of meditation every day for 40 years. There's a lot of losses that we go through, so the ability to be able to cope with those losses is very important to build skill in it, because loss will happen. You know, you have to have spiritual courage to really grow spiritually because if you really want to take guidance from your soul, you have to be ready to realize that many of the things that you're asking for guidance on, your ego has some kind of an addiction to or an investment in. Welcome back to the podcast. This is Josh Trent. I'm so happy you are here. Today, we're talking with my friend, clinical nutritionist and the creator of the Adrenal Recode program, as well as a multi-published author. This woman is a powerhouse and she got to where she is by learning lessons. This is what all of us do on Wellness Force. If you're here for the first time, you know that you got here because you probably are interested in physical and emotional intelligence. Intelligence is not how smart you are. Intelligence, I believe, has three phases. It has the gathering phase, the applying phase, and most importantly, which we're all working on, embodiment. You know when you're around somebody and they just have the qualities that you're working on and you're like, ah, I like that person. Well, this is Krista in a nutshell. And it's a really awesome nutshell because I got to interview her here in my apartment and I was talking with Krista about her program, The Adrenal Recode. Now, you can find this program at wellnessforce.com forward slash recode and you can get actually a free video course from Krista, which is amazing. Do not pass this up. Krista has been doing this work for decades. She is a clinical nutritionist. She's dedicated to helping individuals use food as medicine to heal from the root cause. How does that sound? I mean, food we know is medicine medicine, but how does our food choices and our beliefs and the combination of our mindset and our connection with higher power of some sort, how does that help us in the journey, in the whole journey of life? Well, Krista helps people ignite the natural healing processes of their minds, bodies, and spirits so that they can feel whole again. And Krista was really generous with this video mini course. Again, you can find it at wellnessforce.com forward slash recode. Now, before we get into the podcast, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Organifi. They make the ashwagandha spirulina chlorella infused superfood powder. I've been standing by this company for over two years and they've been getting our back. They help to f- support these shows, these incredibly powerful shows that we have with some of the biggest minds in wellness across the world. And the best way that we can support Organifi, and if you love Wellness Force to support us, is to get 20% off, to save money on their products. Now, they gave our entire audience 20% off the red, green, and gold juice and actually everything on the website. You can get a hookup and get your micronutrients in. Get those things that go and give you energy from the deep down part of your cells at Organifi.com forward slash Wellness Force. Just use code Wellness Force and you can share that code with as many people as you want to give the gift of health. And actually, it's a free test drive too. There's a no risk. If you don't like it, you can send it back. But however, I don't think anyone's ever written in that they sent it back. It just tastes too good. It's actually really, really good. And I do it before I do breath work. I drink the green juice in the mornings before I do my meditation as well. It's a great way to start yourself off in the morning and also to get things moving inside. You know what I mean? (laughs) To get the things inside moving. Now, this podcast that we're doing today, this is a monumental show because it's episode 299. It's one before 300. And at this point in my life, I'm 39 years old. Tell me if you can relate to this. I have these phases where I'll go like really hard and then crash and go up and down and up and down. And what I've been learning this week has been monumental. And I'm going to share it with you. It's it's vulnerable, but shoot, I'm just going to go for it. (laughs) That's my, that's my nervous laugh right there. I learned that my mind has thoughts in it that aren't always of service to my heart. And this space between my head and my heart 
this is a lot of what we're going to explore on Wellness Force today with Krista. One of the thoughts that I've had for a long time that I've done a lot of work on, but it keeps popping up, is that I'm not safe. And this safety thought, I'm not safe, I'm not safe, it's actually not ours. It's programmed. It gets in there either from childhood or even from a past life. And I've gotten through some of the work of Byron Katie with a coach, a very special coach. And I'll be talking with her on the podcast potentially very soon. And this lesson that I learned is that we are not always our thoughts. And those thoughts are the things that drive our adrenal dysregulation, our disease, our weight gain. And they really drive a a barrier of connection between our husbands, our wives, our boyfriends, our girlfriends, the people that we care about. So this show is going to take a different direction. You know, next week is episode 300 and I'm just slowing down, my friend. I'm slowing down. I'm using the breath work. I'm using my greens. I'm using food and I'm using this found trust within myself. It doesn't matter what age you are because whenever the medicine is going to work, that's when the medicine works. And at this point in my life, the medicine of forgiveness and the medicine of doing the real work on inner self-love, inner self-love, outer self-love is great. You know, I love myself. I love myself. But to actually embody that work, to go through the things that hold us back from self-love, that's the real pace. That's the real thing for all of us. That's the real line. That's how we actually learn. So the show is still going to be Josh Trent. It's still going to be me interviewing these amazing guests. I'm just going to be more connected to you. And that's my promise to slow down, to be as present as humanly possible, and to just exude the gratitude that I feel for you being on the show. All right. Now that I've gotten that through my chest, out of my heart, and out of my mouth, now we can get onto this podcast. Thank you so much for being here because this is a woman with deep background. She's got decades in clinical nutrition. Krista Recchio is the host of many shows. And she's got segments on TV talking about nutrition and mind-body connection. But this Adrenal Recode program, I've not seen anything like this in our industry yet. It's beautifully done. It's easy to consume. And by the way, you get a free course. So go over to wellnessforce.com forward slash recode, R-E-C-O-D-E. Did I spell that right? Recode. (laughs) And you will find a free course from Krista. I believe in her work. It was so special to sit with her. We're going to talk about all things adrenal health and how to recode the adrenals using food and mindset and the practices that Krista has learned from decades of clinical nutrition experience. Make sure you go to wellnessforce forward slash 299 to learn more about Krista and go to get the free course. This is a really amazing course. Um, And I'm proud of her. I'm proud of all the things that she's done to get to this point in her life. And the authenticity and vulnerability that she speaks about on this show is rare. She's going to go to the bottom of the ocean with us. And I promise you, you're going to get so many gems out of this show and really learn how you can heal your adrenals by using this recode approach. Let's dig in live and in person in my apartment here in Encinitas with the one and only Krista Arecchio. Oh, man. How many, how many years have you been actually in this game, this nutrition game? It's more than nutrition. Let me, let me back that up. Nutrition, mindset, and spiritual game. All three. Yeah, I would say since 2002, probably. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, from what I read on your site, you had a moment when you were traveling. and Thanks it, for reading it. Oh, yeah. It brought you down this path <laughs> where you had somewhat of an awakening. Mm-hmm. And it was from a specific quote. Um, a gentleman, you took like a yoga course and then you came back and you're like, my life is now going to take a very different direction. Totally. Do you remember the quote or do you remember the gentleman's name where you got that, that he is really healing out there on your travels? Yeah. So it was, uh, Jay Krishnamurti. I don't know if you know him. He's uh-huh. an Indian philosopher and I was traveling around the world and it was, uh, during our second war with Iraq. It was really volatile. It was very interesting to see media from all other countries, which wasn't nearly as sensationalized as, as ours. And I thought, oh my gosh, like how can, how can we create peace in the world? I was headed to become a diplomat and I was reading this book and he really talked about as long as the individual does not understand the total process of himself, like mind, body, and spirit, there will never be peace in the world. And it just hit me like a ton of bricks. I was like, this guy is right. Is this going to be effective if I dedicate my life to to trying to help, you know, trying to become a diplomat? And and then I took a um, nutrition course in South Africa by Patrick Holford. Have you heard of him? I have now. You have now? Yeah. Yeah, he runs the Brain Bio Institute in the UK. And he starts talking about how he's bringing back catatonic schizophrenics with mass doses of niacin. (laughs) And I was like, what? You could do that with nutrition? 
And I changed everything about the way that I ate, got rid of caffeine, super minimized any alcohol, got rid of sugar and refined carbs, started, you know, balancing my blood sugar. And it was just like, I was a different person, the the amount of peace that I felt. Yeah. You were a Jersey girl. I think you said I was raised on pizza, carbohydrates and sugar. (laughs) Pizza, pasta and antibiotics. Pizza, pasta and antibiotics. Because I can think about that. I'm I'm half Italian, um, Sicilian. And so food was like a very pivotal uh, emotional connection point point in our mm-hmm. family. And I can remember times too, where if I didn't eat a certain way, or, or if I wasn't eating like everyone else was, mm-hmm. then I was somehow being disrespectful, mm-hmm. which is a total... Food to- equals love in the Italian Food world. equals love. So <laughs> so when, when you're at that point though, and, and we're going to talk about this beautiful program that you've created, this Adrenal Recode program, which is really like the crux of 20 plus years for you of creation. Um, this is what I'm most excited about to, to talk with you today. But I think there's a bigger story behind it because there's been so many changes for you mm-hmm. personally, professionally, and you've been able to navigate these changes mm-hmm. because of your understanding of the adrenal system and just the human whole system itself. Mm-hmm. When you were at that moment, though, when you were like carbohydrates and pizza and all these different things, did you even think that you'd be creating what you're creating now? I mean, did that ever even flicker in your mind? No, absolutely not. I don't know how it could. What did you think I you were going to do? I knew that I just wanted to help people. Yeah. And I knew I had to be my own way, right? Because you could become a nutritionist, especially back when I was starting in like early 2000s. You're not going to go to a hospital. And, you're, you know, I knew I needed to go into private practice and I really wanted to work one-on-one. And I never thought that I would do anything but work one-on-one. And I, I did. I worked one-on-one. I have a private practice for eight years. And then I started to feel called to be able to help more people, um, to get the information out and it's less expensive for them to do it this way. It gets out to so many more people and it's also fulfilling for me because I'm not repeating myself and I'm putting the work out there, but yet I also can still continue to learn and grow and build new things as, as I learn. So it's kind of a a win-win, but you can never really plan, right? Where life's yeah. going to take you. It's that, that saying, like, we plan and God laughs. And that oh, definitely, I was just going to say yeah, that to you. I feel <laughs> that's like I've been seen my that. whole, that's every day for me. I feel like no. I've seen that on a bumper sticker too. It's like, we have these plans and, and they, they're coming from a great place for the most of us, but yet life does what life does. Yeah, Life puts these thresholds in front of us and it really causes people to do a gut check, kind of come to Jesus moment where it's, oh, what kind of strategies do I have to cope? with yeah. this stress. Yeah. What is my initial intelligence and what is my self-awareness when it comes to me dealing and moving through the stress instead of going around it and it, and really ignoring it? You know, the only way out is truly through. It is. I think of the Doors song, like break on through and, and it's true. And I feel that collectively we are in this like 21st century stress disease of chronic overwhelm, chronic burnout, like we're living off of stress hormones and we can't, as a society, keep going the way that we've been going. And that's the part. You're like, is it a breakdown? Yeah, you've got a breakdown to break through. Mm -hmm. But that's, it's like you said, the only way out is through. We can't medicate it anymore. We can't try to supplement it away. We can't, you know, just read a book or, you know, that type of thing. Take a yoga class. It's like we've got to do the hard work, but it can be simple. Yeah. Especially with the right guidance. To transform with the right guidance. This is the key. And support. One thing that you talked about recently in media, I think it was either on YouTube or on the Wellness Mom podcast is you talked about early in life, like having to be the lone wolf, like taking care of everything on your own. And and a lot of us can raise our hands and say, hey, if we came from um, a parental example where we were forced to do everything on our own as children, that definitely goes into our adult life. Mm-hmm. And I think, tell me, tell me how you sense this evolving for you. For so long, you focused on gut health. Yeah. Like that was... That was like really how you served hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people was teaching them about the gut. Why now? Like why this year have you really focused more on adrenal health and adrenals? Do you still combine the gut health with the adrenal health or is it more a shift because you see this in the collective? Uh, it's whole body health, but it starts with the nervous system. And so the being raised on pizza, pasta, and antibiotics piece of it all, like really I was, my dad was in the pharmaceutical industry for 42 years. Like I became immune to, you know, two antibiotics by age six. So that kind of followed my own path into gut health and raging candida and adrenal and thyroid issues. And we know if we look at the functional medicine paradigm, there's, it's a triangle, right? One point of the triangle is the gut 
the other point is the thyroid, the top is the adrenals. If you address basically all three of those, like you're going to get a massive improvement in all aspects of health. And so I've always also concurrently talked about the adrenals and thyroid, but it wasn't until me going through so much of my own process of really realizing, because I, I can't even count, Josh, the number of times I've quoted Hippocrates when he says all disease begins in the gut, right? Yeah. But I don't, I no longer think that's true. I think all disease begins in the nervous system. And the nervous system is the foundation of all human health. Every single person is listening. Yeah. And then when the nervous system goes on the fritz and you click into what's called sympathetic dominance and you're in fight or flight most of the time, which most of us are living off of stress hormones and we don't even realize it, then boom, whatever your genetic weakness is going to get hit, the gut, the immune system, the thyroid and the adrenals are a team. I want to talk about more of that too, because yeah. there's a way we can identify the key symptoms of us actually being in this adrenal fatigue, which there's so there's an ocean of info online. Yes. And I think when people even look at the subject of adrenal health, they're they're a bit overwhelmed from the from the start, from the get-go. Right. But you posted something on social recently that I thought was really succinct. Uh, it was on your Instagram. You said the state of the nervous system dictates health or disease in any one body. Yeah. Let's start there okay. with just unpacking the way that the nervous system is literally the undercurrent for all human health. It is the undercurrent for all human health. And it's just, it's, and it's, it's throughout our entire body. And we focus specifically on two branches of the nervous system, the sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic. And so we've got sympathetic, which is fight, flight, or freeze and parasympathetic, which is rest, digest, and heal. And that's where we should be living in and from the vast majority of the time, 80, 90% of the time and use our other nervous system to keep us safe, alive, you know, make a quick turn so you don't get in a car accident, yeah. that type of a thing. Yeah. But the problem is, just like when I studied gut health with pathogens, right? We are flipped. We're, we're living 80% of the time in fight, flight, or freeze, and maybe not even 20% of the time in our parasympathetic nervous system, not even when we're sleeping. So many people are taking sleeping pills or not getting deep rest because the nervous system's still revved, which is why they don't wake up feeling yeah. refreshed. Yeah. And so, you know, as soon as that happens, it's this entire domino effect, and we know studies are there you're you're in fight or flight you're producing cortisol what happens boom insulin your blood sugar regulating hormone you can't regulate your blood sugar anymore now the thyroid has to slow down so then we start to get hypothyroid the immune system is challenged so now you eat that sushi and whereas you wouldn't have gotten H. pylori if there or some kind of parasite from the sushi, yeah. now you might get it, right? And so this is what I'm talking about. A strong nervous system prevents the body, like the immune system stays strong. It prevents us from getting these infections that can take root in the gut and cause leaky gut and food sensitivities. And so it, it's, it's really everything and and it's you can't just approach it physiologically i mean we heal it we repattern this you know chronic whirlpool of basically overproducing cortisol and locking out insulin or desensitizing our cells to insulin. But then you've got to learn how to emotionally repattern because yeah. life's going to do what life's going to do for mm -hmm. all of us. We're on this wild ride together. And the next time a stressor comes, you've got to have some kind of emotional mastery that allows you to respond instead of react. Because if you're constantly reacting, then you're going to drive the physiological process. And then, then the, the clinical aspect of this work becomes a band-aid effect. Effectively, which I learned the hard way. <laughs> yes, which we'll talk about later in the show because I one thing that fascinated me the most is the parallels of my exploration, how we've gone down this route with wellness force of physical and emotional intelligence. And I was talking to you about this before we clicked on the recorder. And this concept of psychoneuroimmunology, the yep. ability of the brain yep. to make us well or sick. We just talked about it this week with Sandra Biskind. And I think about the way that you're guiding people through these pillars of health with literally resetting the way that their nervous system works. Exactly. Let's unpack this psychoneuroimmunology. Thoughts become things. It's not just spoken by Wallace Waddles or Napoleon Hill. Mm -hmm. We know that thoughts become things because when I go on a stage, I feel nervous and I do my breath work and I'm less nervous because I'm in control. I'm in better control of my thoughts because I pull the lever in my physiology. Mm -hmm. So how do you describe psychoneuroimmunology in this work with the adrenal recode? All right. I like it. Well, I love the work of Joe Dispenza. 
I love the work of Bruce Lipton, mm-hmm. right? And, and there's these guys, if you look, I'm sure you've got these books yeah, here. There's books right behind the us. Biology Beliefs on this there, wall. It's right maybe? behind Chris's yeah. shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's we know that our, our thoughts drive our emotions and our emotions drive our biology. And so many of us, we come into this world without a nervous system intact. Like preconception, what was going on with mom and dad and preconception is already forming the health and the state of your nervous system. Do you system. also think past life as well? In your research, does that come up? Past life trauma epigenetically expressed in the um, same vein? I can't speak to, okay. I, I'm, I'm open to it, yeah. but I've never studied it. Got it. But yeah, I'm open to, I'm really open to it all. Um, but from what what we've studied, I would start as soon as preconception, right? And and what you're exposed to from age one to seven and just the, those those yeah. feelings of safety or not. And it just kind of sets up this, this whole process. And so when we're going through the adrenal recode, the first and most important thing to be able to dismantle to your terminology a negative psychoimmuno Psycho neuroimmunology. Psycho neuroimmunology. Say that three times yeah, fast. Psycho neuroimmunology <laughs> to really to dismantle a negative pattern or an unhealthy pattern that is initiating chronic high adrenaline that then creates feeling that then dysregulates blood sugar that then creates feelings of not feeling safe is is to go through really a process that we have now taken many hundreds of people through and you've got to identify and dismantle or examine your limiting beliefs Right, and I know you've you've probably talked about limiting beliefs a lot. Sure, I don't know how much you want to go into it, but it's well. I mean, I I love the fact that you brought it up because it is part of your program, and we'll talk about the pillars of that. And really, you know, it's interesting when I think of the word program. It's a learning course. It's a way that people can understand how to reprogram themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's more than just a course. And I was I was going through it, and I was telling you this. I feel like this is a perfect course for me. Yeah. For, an, for an entrepreneur who is constantly in the doing, creating, even with my tools and my understanding of how to regulate my nervous system, I can still see how having additional knowledge, support, and guidance can be so powerful. And uh, and I celebrate you for saying that. You know, yeah. me, even though I created this program, when I, we were talking about before we went live, like I know I'm I'm a very sensitive person. I'm an empath and entrepreneur. I yeah. will always have to take care of my thyroid and adrenal health. It's not like oh, I got this. <laughs> You know, yeah. and, and we should never approach our health like that because it's this ever evolving, living, breathing thing. I want to go back to the lone wolf concept then because it goes to exactly That's what we're talking about. Belief systems. Belief yeah. systems. So I think about, especially men, a lot of women are drawn to your work. So you've been serving, would you say the community at the whole journey is mostly women or are there men in there as well? We're 80 20. 80 20. Mm-hmm. So I think about men that are being led to wellness by women and the way that people can go through this program and understand deeper aspects of themselves. How would you say that people even find this in the first place? Do they Google adrenal health? How do, do they find us? How do they find you and how do they find this program? Like, what are they typing in? What are they really searching for? You know, anxiety, insomnia, and exhaustion. And these are three chronic issues that your adaptogens, your B vitamins don't take away, that, you know, simple dietary shifts, you know, these are these are things that really affect every aspect of your life and your relationships. When you really think about what that is, if you're not sleeping and then you're, you know, you're constantly needing to rely on caffeine or sugar, then you need alcohol to calm down at night, you know, craving salt and, and of course the anxiety, you know, if you're, you don't have space for real relationships, if your nervous system is all wound up and you're constantly feeling anxious, right? You get, you actually miss life, you know, knowing from having a lot of anxiety, you're missing life and presence and and all of that and yeah. so i so that's really what people are searching for but you know we 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 launched this to our our own tribe that's known and followed us and taken our programs for a while and what i'm realizing is that people don't understand the profound interconnectedness of all of it and when we surveyed them afterwards you know what are your what are your biggest challenges <clears throat> what were your biggest challenges it was I think I'm in perimenopause, you know, having children and never feeling the same since Um, people in menopause, not being able to lose weight, not not understanding the hormone weight loss connection. This is all intertwined into this work. Yeah. And the way that people find anything is because whatever they're doing isn't working, whatever medicine they've been doing, whether it's self-soothing, whether it's coping strategies, it at some point on their journey stopped working and they start looking for new answers and solutions. 
it's what we put on our <clears throat> enrollment page. It's like when the glass of wine no longer takes off the edge, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when the so cup true. of coffee no longer gives you a kick. Right. Like it's time to recode. Or, or when the things that worked, think about from our 20s to our 30s. You remember your 20s, right? Yeah. Uh, so do I, a little bit. I used to treat my <laughs> body with, with such harshness. You know, I, I didn't really love and respect my body. And these things catch up to us. You know, many people in the health space talk about um, a, a health debt that we collect when we're 20s and 30s and, and treating ourselves not with the most loving care. Yeah. Would you say that this program is built for people that are in their 30s and 40s? Or what's the age range of people that come to this? A 30 to 60. Yeah. It is, is a, it's, it's a broad age range. And every now and then we get people who are younger because it's interesting. The millennial generation is growing up with a much more toxic world than even we did. Because really the proliferation of GMOs was in like right around when we graduated high school. So at least even though, you know, if we weren't eating perfectly, we still didn't have this whole factor. Um, so, so yeah, that's interesting. But I'd say it's, it's, it's people 30 to 60 and it's, we've all been exposed to chronic stress. You know, whether you've yeah. had, uh, PTSD. We've got some veterans. We've got, you've gone through divorce. You've gone through financial challenges. You're an entrepreneur. And a lot of times it, we don't celebrate the extraordinary journey it takes for a woman's body to grow a human life. The greatest physical event of your life is to give birth. And then it's not like you get to rest and recover. Then you're getting woken up every two hours. Yeah. Well, in, in and the old tribes, they would, out, right. they would give them they a break. They would give them a would break. They would give them a break, but it's not our culture. Yeah, it's like We're lucky if other. we get a maternity leave and it takes two full years to recover the adrenals after having a child. And that's the point where most people will have one, another one before then. And then you know, that's, even though it's the most amazing blessing, it is so traumatic on the hormones, on the body and it requires recovery. And really, Josh, what this whole, the, what the physiological aspect of all of this comes down to is cellular health. So you hear a lot of people, they're looking up adrenal fatigue. People say, is that even a real thing? No, it's really not, right? Adrenal fatigue isn't necessarily a real thing. It's kind of this popular fad term for a circadian rhythm issue, for not having good cellular respiration, not being able to produce energy, and not being able to convert your food into fuel because you've set up this chaotic hormonal pattern. Yeah. And now you're not getting, like in order to have good cellular health, you've got to get glucose, to your point, oxygen and thyroid hormone into the cell. And when you're constantly stressed like that and the adrenals are overproducing cortisol and adrenaline, you can't do that. And a lot of people's thyroid labs are coming back and they think, oh, my thyroid nor seems normal, but I feel awful. I'm constipated. I can't think straight. Yeah. Right. And so what happens is as soon as the adrenals and, and the people are staying in this phase for years. But in the beginning when this starts happening, the body has trouble converting inactive thyroid hormone T4 into active thyroid hormone T3. So there's your first challenge. Maybe they're both present, but if the conversion's not happening, it doesn't matter. It's not working. And then you've got to make it available inside the cell. So you've got, kind of got this like three-step hurdle you've got to go through to start yeah. generating cellular energy once again. So that's what goes on from a science perspective. But let's let's dig into somebody actually identifying like, okay, I really believe that based on these symptoms, there is something going on with my adrenals. Like, what are the key factors in people identifying that? Um, dizziness. So you go from sitting to standing. I loved when I walked in here, you're like, oh, it's like lemon and salt in your water, right? Because you're giving me the minerals. It's yeah. just great. And so we're, we're really mineral deficient. Yeah. It's almost like you can't get enough minerals. You can't stay hydrated. You can't hold on to your water, so to speak, kind of rinsing yourself out when you're in adrenal fatigue. So you constantly feel thirsty and you get lightheaded from sitting to standing. You get dizzy. Circadian rhythms flip. So you're waking up chronically between 1 and 4 a.m. Like, hey, wide awake, right? Or you get heart palpitations and you wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. with heart palpitations ready to start the day. Can't fall asleep. And that kind of chronic low level of anxiety of you just don't quite feel safe. And maybe nothing's actually wrong. You can't put your finger on it, but you can't settle in. Um, constipation goes a lot as soon as the thyroid, you may, in, initially you might start to get a little loose because you get the stress gut and then mm -hmm. the thyroid, you start to go hypothyroid and then 
there's there's constipation. There's this concept too that you speak about. It's like hangry versus hungry. Yeah. <laughs> like we've all felt that like I'm so angry at like how actually I'm craving this pizza right now. I'm going to eat the entire thing. <laughs> yeah. No, and, and, and like I, an animal, right? Like yeah. when is it going to be like, here? <laughs> I need to eat every, I need to eat all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there is a way that we can naturally identify regular hunger pains, regular hunger, you know, mechanisms. Yeah. So what, what is that? What's the difference between regular hunger signaling, you know, the leptin ghrelin versus, oh God, I'm, I'm hangry and this might be a symptom of adrenal burnout? Oh, hangry is a thousand percent a symptom of adrenal burnout. And that's again, because you're going into fight or flight. So of course you're going to get irritable and you're going to get shaky. And because what's happening is you don't have any reserves when you're in adrenal fatigue. We have glycogen reserves in our muscles and our liver when we're healthy and we're resourced. But if when we have these adrenal and thyroid problems, we don't have any reserves. So now you miss a meal You have no reserves to keep blood sugar balanced. So boom, you move into fight or flight, like I'm going to kill somebody unless I eat a pizza now type of situation, right? And and it feels traumatic. So when you think about the root cause of stress, stress is caused by a drop in blood sugar, which then initiates high adrenaline levels, which then leads you to feeling angry, hangry, unsafe, irritable, you know, you name it. And you just can't tolerate stress. And so... So that's a telltale sign, and um, but here's the problem with most people who are struggling with this. They we we test them in the adrenal recode to see you know kind of how what deep how deep is the nervous system dysfunction, and about eighty percent of our our recoders fall into tier two, and that would be where there's significant dysfunction because the liver's not functioning properly. So you wake up with no appetite. You need to be able to eat, but you wake up with no appetite and then you get hungry later, but it's like a state of emergency hunger versus, hmm, my stomach's growling. I still, I'm still working. I feel fine. I should eat something soon, right? Yeah. So two totally different feelings. You talked about this in the mini course and by the time this comes out, there's still people for, there's still time for you to look at the mini course. It's wellnessforce.com forward slash recode. So go there right now because I want to ask you this specific question. It's about how to actually test. You use pulse and temperature. Yep. to see how things are actually working. That's granular. I mean, you talk about this in the mini course. Tell us why temperature and the pulse are such key indicators of this. I, I didn't know that we could do it literally in real time. Real time. I, I'm, I'm used to the lab real test. Time. I'm used to the lab test. I have been for, you know, really almost two decades now, like into the lab test and there's nothing wrong with them. You go run your four point cortisol panel, you look at DHEA, you look at melatonin, then you run your full spectrum thyroid, but you're getting a snapshot in time. Yeah. Here's where your health is now, but you're not, you don't know how to fix that and get instant feedback, right? Nothing wrong with the lab test. Of course, they've helped me help so many people, but temperature and pulse is easy, free, and provides real time feedback as to whether your adrenals and thyroid are able to regulate your blood sugar. And it's an accurate reflection of available T3 inside of the cell. So we are using temperature and pulse, and we show you how to do this in the mini course um, when you wake up, before you go to bed, and 20 minutes after breakfast or lunch or lunch or dinner. So you can start to see how are you being affected, not just meal to meal and we're giving you new breakfasts and new snacks and things like that as you go through the mini course because we want you to be able to see the effect of this but it's everything to your point it's how you move how you breathe how you think what did you do throughout the day and this is giving people the most powerful yet clinical intuitive nutrition possible because it's like how do you feel and how does your body respond when you do have what you need for yourself and what you don't have what you need for yourself and yeah. it's almost like allowing us to reparent ourselves or to parent ourselves oh, in general you I know? love I love that you said that this concept has come up probably three or four times in the past 10 shows the idea of whatever wasn't serving me that I came here to learn in this world that happened probably zero through seven. Let's be real. Yeah, it, it, that's the belief system. That's the belief system, Boom. right? You know, now, we all get them. <laughs> that's the base. And then on top of that comes our response. So there's the beliefs at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Then are, then there's the thoughts. Oh my God, because of this belief, I have a thought that I'm not safe. I'm not loved. I'm not enough, whatever it is. Yeah. But then on top of that, there's the feeling. Mm-hmm. Now, what I'd like to ask you and what I've been pontificating about a lot in my own life lately is a lot of these feelings and thoughts, they're not ours. They're just guideposts. They're yeah. coming because of the belief set and everything is this yeah. hormonal cascade, which eventually leads us to where we are now. I'm so glad you said that, Josh. It's We have to dismantle these beliefs if we are to live the authentic version of ourselves and to self-actualize. It's taking off a set of glasses that we never knew we were, were wearing <laughs> so we can see the world. Yeah 
the way it actually is instead of through our belief systems. I feel like to drive this home with your listeners, I should give an example. Please. Like, can I give my own personal example? I want example? you to give it all. Give okay. It all. Yeah. And I know, I mean, to some extent, we've talked about this. So, so if you look at every, every belief connected to love, safety, connection, or belonging. When I was a child, my brother had a lot of health issues. He was, he was disabled. It took, it took my parents really all their energy. So it kind of locked in. It's not like anyone said this to me. I was like three or four. Okay, I'm on my own. I got to do this all by myself. I got to be the people pleaser because he's taking up enough you know, negative emotions. So I've got to provide positive emotions, the healer, the helper, and I'm on my own. Right. And it helped me cope at that when you're, you know, we can never judge or blame ourselves for these things that happen that, that get kind of cemented in these subliminal messages that end up guiding our life. And so, so we kind of go through and we live our lives like that and it can help us like, Oh, I'm on my own. I have to do everything by myself. Right. It helped me create a successful business and be an entrepreneur and, and all that stuff. Long story short, brother turns into an addict, right? And then you have that whole situation going on at home. So then the people pleaser goes further down the spectrum to codependent. I didn't dismantle these belief systems because I didn't know they existed. And so what do I attract in my adult life? I attracted an addict for a partner who I ended up marrying. And I have this belief system. I have to do everything by myself. So what do you think? Yes, I was the breadwinner. Yes, I was the cook, the cleaner, the, all that stuff, right? right? And then when that just kind of imploded and fell apart, I realized what was happening. And I started to say no. And I started to do this work and dive into these limiting beliefs, examine them. Are they really even true, right? Byron Katie's work. Ugh. Is it really true? Is it true? And you start to think, no, and you're changing this. You're somatically releasing it from the body. And before I knew it, it's like, oh my gosh, I was scared. I, I filed for divorce when I was one month pregnant. I thought, how am I, how am I going to have a baby by myself and run a business? And who's going to walk the dog? I have all these things going through my mind. <laughs> oh my and gosh. so I tell you, like my neighborhood, my friends, my family, the amount when I shifted this belief system, yeah. like that came and the support and that is still here. Now my son's 18 months old. Oh my gosh, it wasn't true at all. You, had to, you know, the, I told you I have the best team at my company that I've yeah. ever had and my whole life is different and better. And this is how we turn our pain into power. I got to pause right there because you, you talked about this in actually the video. It's the fourth video in the mini course. It's the story section. And you said something really interesting to me that I've heard other people explain in different ways. And it was that this belief system that I was projecting out into the universe, projecting out into the world, things and people and events came to me to prove my prove it true. To prove, prove it my true. belief system yes. true. So my question is, could it be so simple that doesn't mean it's easy, mm -hmm. but could it be so simple that we recognize these beliefs? And then just by doing the work to yes. go right to the beliefs themselves, that is what can actually adjust everything else, our emotional maturity, our intelligence, the way we interact, the way we show up for relationships. Is it truly all about going straight down to the, to the beliefs? It, that is step one. It's the most important. It's the first cut in the yeah. surgery process of, right, mm -hmm. of removing what doesn't belong and what has been implanted, supplanted, whatever. Yes. And awareness is the first step towards changing anything. If you don't know, it's happening, of course. And so anybody listening, if it's like you keep attracting the same guy or same girl, different face, same relationship, why does this always happen to me? Why does this never work out for me? You use those types of qualifiers a lot in your language. It's just a wonderful signpost to say, hey, go to the belief systems because you can dismantle these and enjoy a completely different experience of life. I love where we are in this conversation because so much of your work is about the practical, the tactical. You know, you're showing people literally what proteins, fats, and carbs to eat so that they can recode their system. But you also incorporate the emotional intelligence. And this is what I think is so rare. I think you wrote me an email and you're like, listen, this approach is really cutting edge. It breaks the mold because there's absolutely nothing like it out there. And it's needed in this overstressed society. And I was like, yep, oh, wow, we're going to do, cool. a, we're gonna do a podcast. Email. Yeah. We're and Well, I love everything you post and do. And I, and I came to my mom, I was like, Josh will really dig this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so are the men and women here with us because this discovering process, yeah. we're doing it together. We're yeah. not alone here. No, we're all in this together. We're in this together. So mm -hmm. when people begin, you, I like how you said that, the first cut. When people go to the first cut, what are you seeing that comes up in your programs, in your beta? Well, here's the, here's the beautiful thing is that 
what because we've done the work to shut off the stress response and create safety within the body for the first month of the adrenal recode the bandwidth is there the the that the, you're you're much more able to do the work mm-hmm. right than going into it super anxious and overwhelmed because you're starting to feel better starting to sleep better you feel less anxiety have more energy maybe you want a couple pounds of weight loss whatever it is you're starting to feel progress and like you can take a deep breath for the first time in mm. years a lot of people say A lot of people say, you know what? I never knew what it was like to feel calm but not sleepy. (laughs) They're like, really? Calm and it's like if you're, you got to be anxious if you're awake (laughs) and productive. And so we get them to that place where they can feel calm. And then I call it, you know, like a surgery because we just like we have the six pillar approach with with the physiological, we've got a five stage approach here. And the first cut is identifying your limiting beliefs. And we've got a Tony Robbins life coach who's exceptional at this. Um, And once they do that, then we go through it again. This is all the process that I went through to make sure I would incubate my my son in a body that wasn't filled with stress hormones, right? And then the next step, you've got to release it physiologically from the body. So then we have an emotional mastery coach that really helps you identify trap negative emotions in your body and mobilize them so then you can put empowering emotions in there just as we're moving towards the beliefs. And then from there, we work concurrently in this, in that module, this is module five of it, with something I developed called the, the right personal accountability. And it's this continuum of accountability where we all should get, and I think you're going to love this, we should all get to the midpoint of right personal accountability, which is we can live our lives with an expression of integrity. And anything, let's say, to the right is we take over accountability. There's an, and a lot of times us empaths fall in that, you know, the people pleasers, perfectionist codependents, we yeah. fall in that. And then here's the thing, on the left side of the spectrum would be manipulators, narcissistic personalities. I'm not going as far to say sociopaths and psychopaths, but people with those traits, right? Lack of conscience. And so however far you are on the spectrum to the right, you're going to attract someone, life situations, whether they be, you know, romantic relationships, business partnerships, anything to having to do with it on the other end of the spectrum. And so we do the work to get to the midpoint of right accountability. And that can be, that's a lot of the mirroring work. That's really important to take radical accountability and responsibility for every aspect of our life. There's no room for victimhood on either side, but then that prevents you from ever being a victim again. And then you have your own back. You learn how to establish healthy boundaries. We move them into presence and gratitude and a really powerful forgiveness process. And so as you see how it's this whole surgery where your first cut, you're removing, but then we revolve the beliefs and then we do the empowering beliefs and we rewrite the story, but you can't plant flowers in a junkyard. So you got to do the detail. <laughs> Talks necessary. I love. I love how you talk in metaphor because I love metaphor. It's my favorite way to explain things because you could because a child could get it. You can understand it. A child or you know a four time doctorate at Stanford. If they hear the same metaphor, they understand it. It's right. it's more of an embodiment process for the intelligence. So I think about the first cut and then the salve. Actually, when you're done stitching it up and you're done the healing, forgiveness is like it's like the antibiotic ointment that yeah, you put on on the outside. It is. You know, it's like, it's, and then you put a bandaid on it and then, and then it heals. And it heals. And, and the power of forgiveness to the self, really. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people in your program, I'm, I'm curious how you feel about this. Even people you've worked with, with strictly nutrition and then this evolution to the adrenal recode, most people have the biggest issues forgiving themselves. Yeah. You know, it's easier actually to forgive someone else or, or to move on from someone else. But yeah. it's, it's the forgiveness of self. Like, oh my God, I spent 10 years eating foods that literally crushed my nervous system. How do I forgive myself for that? You know, I'd love for you to speak on that part, like the self-forgiveness. Yeah. Well, when you, and that's why you've got to do the belief system work first, because you can't, you wouldn't judge or blame a friend that was doing something that they were unaware of. Like, so you have to become aware of it first. And then it's kind of like this shocking, because a lot of people, you know, we attract a lot of empaths and a lot of chronic overgivers and doers. And, you know, that was me. And I'm always still watching that trade, right? To stay at the midpoint. And you can kind of become shocked, like, oh my God, I attracted this. I created this. But you, then you have to have, you know, you'll have self-compassion through that process and you start to understand we're all here to learn, grow and evolve. And so um, we use the the work of the four agreements and, and it's true. And, and, yeah. and you just, you can't, you know, judge yourself. So our, we call it the free yourself forgiveness process. The free yourself forgiveness process. 
Yeah. And so you're listing out your, I mean, this is, and it was developed, um, it was developed uh, by a PhD and in neuropsychology. And so, and, and it works because, yeah, you're listing out like everyone that you need to forgive. You know, even that kid that gave you a negative comment in second grade, you don't remember his name, but it stayed with you, right? Like you're just like, everyone you need to forgive. And then you list everything you need to forgive yourself for, but you're in a much better place to actually do it because you've been through all the other work. Yeah. There's a term that we've talked about on the show and it's called gathering the evidence. Yeah. So we're all gathering evidence all day long, mm-hmm. either that we're loved and supported and that we're on the right path or that the world is a scary place. People can't be trusted and money causes pain. Yeah. <laughs> right? so yeah. This is the way that we're gathering. And mm-hmm. so in your course, what, what are some of the ways that you help people gather the right kind of evidence so that their nervous system can feel safe? Yeah, that's an awesome question, Josh. So yeah, we talk about basically like belief systems, like you say, is like there's a tabletop. You get this belief and then, hey, you better go find the legs to support it, right? right. And so then they start realizing this. So it's like, well, if you built these these limiting beliefs, you can build these empowering beliefs. So I'll go back to my, my story again. When I started to say... I am supported. I'm not alone, right? That's my new tabletop, my empowering belief. And boom, when I, um, when I first filed for divorce, it was kind of intense. There was an abusive situation, so I also filed for a restraining order. And this is right at the same time that I'm starting to dismantle this belief. And all of my sh- friends showed up in droves without even being asked. And they signed up and they were all staying with me for a six-week period of time. So I wouldn't be alone, right? And it was just like t- 10, 15 friends. And it was amazing to me. And then all of a sudden, my dear friend who was my doula, and also she was like the acting husband, right? Having the baby. She puts out a meal train and a dog walking train and the neighbors. And I had people doing, literally doing everything for me, making it so much easier. And it's like, wow, my whole life is changed like as a result of this so I'm gathering the evidence right this is evidence I'm so not alone and so I've now I'm able to reach out for help I'm able to reach out where for support where before for me it was kind of a one-way street you know checking in on friends what do you need what do you need I wouldn't think to ask or want to ask and that's more of a protection out of lack of ability to be vulnerable but in order to have real relationships people they want to help and so when I really realized that that was all the evidence right hey can you come watch my son so I can do a podcast? Can you come to, and people love it and it builds a family like nurturing support. And so, so it's like, you see, it's, it's not just the table. You're building like a whole cement brick. You're not mm. just looking for legs because it's a new life. So you're building the whole thing and it's like so solid. So there's no way you can ever go back to the way you were living before. I can't yeah. even imagine that. It's impossible. You've, it's transformation that's happened. The The word program, which we've mentioned a lot, recoding the program. So many, I think back to a podcast, maybe a hundred shows ago with Bonnie Kelly, and we talked about reprogramming the subconscious mind. Yeah. And she said that literally, if you look at the research of science, neuroplasticity is our ability to change synaptic pathways. Yes. So the very same grooved pathways that make someone live their life out of fear, collect the evidence that they're not loved and that the world is a scary place. Those can be changed literally as if you were melting new plastic together, neuroplasticity. Right. Right. So some of the things that you do in your program help people support that. There's this myelin sheath around where the axons and the dendrites connect. There are certain foods that can help people in this repatterning process. Yeah. So when you're dressing, we we lead with the adrenals because people know what the adrenals are, right? But the adrenals, the thyroid, the nervous system and the brain, part of that healing is remyelating the myelin sheath. And that's the electrical insulator that supports our nerve cells. And we've been through trauma. It's like taking sandpaper to that electrical insulator. And then we're basically living in PTSD, you know, yeah. it's not, not like, of course, so many veterans have PTSD from everything they've experienced, I but can't even imagine. so many, like yeah. so many of us are walking around with that just because of modern life or to some degree. And so yes, the foods, everything, we use synergistic foods to support all four systems. It's 95%, you know, food based and we're using breath and just a couple of supplements, but you're remyelating that myelin sheath. You're replenishing the neurotransmitters, the chemical messengers in the brain, which are the beginning of hormonal balance. Hormonal balance begins in the brain. So we're not just talking adrenals, thyroid. We're talking every aspect of hormonal and immune health, right? Yeah. And 
that's also helping people tremendously who have TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, and, and MS, you know, that are going through the program. And so, yeah, it's a really comprehensive approach to healing that is simple, but not easy. What about people that are taking SSRIs or that have bipolar one or two, or what about people that have unique challenges? How do they navigate your program? How do they navigate the recoding of themselves? That's an interesting question. I mean, just like clinically speaking, right? Yeah. Because we're helping the microbiome, because we're balancing the brain, so much of this is like, and, and you can be on any medications throughout this program because it's food-based. You can mm. do it pregnant, you can do it nursing. And so, you know, you're getting the right amount of amino acids, the right amount of micronutrients and vitamins, minerals, and trace minerals. And, and you're getting so much profound balance that then you look back and see, do you really have depression? Or was that SSRI used as a Band-Aid to get through a really tough period in life? But it, it's it's not meant to be yeah. long-term. I, you know, I would say what you just said is true more times than not. Yeah, it's like, and we, we guess here's your label. You know, I mean, bipolar is 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 a very real thing. It's, it can be a scary thing, it can be genetic, but yeah. so much can be attenuated and improved through nourishment on all levels. And then you see what you're left with and whatever that medication works so much better right yeah. so um the food-based aspect is the main aspect i mean we could go for hours and we won't get into past lives and maybe okay. another time over tea yeah, yeah. but when you start to think we'll get you talking like, about past lives i mean at some no, point. no 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 I, I mean i do talk about past lives a lot in my personal life okay, does that cool. really you know right, right. i haven't studied it you know clinically or anything yes but you really start to think like what are these these whether it's schizophrenia whether it's all of this yes there's a genetic component but yeah there could be a past life or just being way too sensitive or maybe you have mediumship abilities that you don't know how to work with so it it goes into this different type of mental illness but yeah. this is really all we're talking about in the u.s now finally like mental mental quote-unquote mental illness is really just a culmination of trauma from so many different directions that has not had any space to be released and the top is blowing off. Let's let that land for a moment because that right there is exactly what all of it's all, it's a universal human condition that we deal with finances, stress, maybe parenting, um, toxic things in our environment. We're all in here together. We're yeah. all dealing with it. Some people though come to this life with maybe a more robust immune system or they received yeah. more parental support or yeah. maybe they're in a space where there's not as much toxicity stress, in their yeah. environment or stress. Mm -hmm. Yet we are where we are. And I, and I, this is what I love about your work. It's just identifying what is the truth of where we actually are today in this moment? Yeah. So someone right now is listening and they're, they're feeling the inspiration about this they begin where ex exactly where they are. There's no other place to begin. I think a lot of people try to go outside themselves like, well, I should start with this book or I should start with this thing. Like, yeah. Talk to us about being really honest with yourself about where you are, whether you're a man or a woman and identifying like, okay, this is my starting point and this is my honesty. This is my truth. I love it. Well, I'm thinking of the Prince quote, like, dearly beloved, we're all gathered here today to get through this thing <laughs> called life, you know? And, that's right, that's um, right. And yeah, it, it's really interesting, Josh, because, you know, going through with our first group of, of you know, really take, we're taking 500 people through in the beginning of, of the Adrenal Recode. We are so societally conditioned and programmed to look outside of ourselves. And the recode, people don't know where to start. They don't know what their starting place yes. is. So the beginning, we talk about establishing your baseline and creating this tether that the vast majority of society doesn't have. They're like, well, wait a minute. I just want a protocol. I just want a process. And it's like, what do you mean? Tell me exactly how many carbs, proteins, and fats to eat. And I say, I can't. I need your temperature and pulse and your logs and you tuning into yourself. Like this is both art and science, right? And the objective part is, yeah, the objective science-based part are the temperature and pulse. And the subjective, which gives the temperature and pulse meaning, are how you feel and tuning into that at the deepest level. And so it's that's the whole first part of the program is establishing a baseline because I don't think a lot of people have an accurate idea of where they are. Mm. They know they're stressed. They know they're not sleeping. They know things aren't working for them. And that's all they know when they come in. And so it's, okay, let's establish this and let's just accept it. First of all, let's accept it. That's the first, you find out where you are, you accept it, and then you start to, to build a, mm. a, a plan from there. Right there when you said, can we, let's accept it. Th I think that's the big hurdle is 
most people's lives are built off of fighting the acceptance of really what is. Yeah. And we did, and it's just why we, we had, cause we, I've got a clinical team, right. And there's like, there's seven of us answering questions and tickets and we're on live webinars, um, you know, four days a week and it still wasn't enough. And all of my other programs, it would be overboard enough. But when the nervous system is so bound up, you can't, listen, you can't slow down. So the first three weeks is really, it's tough and it takes a while. And then they get to that place and like, oh, now I get it. Cause it's so different. It's just such a different way to exist, yeah. to eat, to live, to think. Wow. But I feel like it's the only way. I it mean, I, I really, way. I'm not, it's not about a panacea or anything. It's, it's that whole concept of the self is the guru. The body has infinite inherent wisdom claim your power, use your power as a human. So start where you are with what you have and mm -hmm. do what's possible. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know who said that quote. Mm -hmm. I probably butchered it a little bit, but, <laughs> but it's essentially yeah. at the core of what you're saying. So wellnessforce.com forward slash recode is the mini course. Go there now. It's free. It's free. And it's you, go, free. you go through the mini course. Um, myself and my clinical team are there answering questions. Start to outsmart stress with food. We're going to we're going to have you eating breakfast within 30 minutes or an hour of waking. We're going to give you three breakfasts. You can download them. I st we start with a, a recode morning elixir. You get the recipe in the course because we want to refill your glycogen stores that we talked about yeah. in the muscles, in the liver after you've been fasting all night to start to build up those reserves, to build up your tolerance to stress. And then we're going to bookend you at night with these snacks, whether it's a salty banana with cashews to your point to generate more serotonin and shut off hot flashes and keep you sleeping between 1 and 4 a.m., or it's a macronutrient like um, golden milk that's supercharged to be able to slash the inflammation process and Plus it's tasty. keep you down. And it's tasty yeah. and it's nurturing and on, on an emotional level as well as a physical level. And so we, we get you on that too in the mini course, and then you can start to look into temperature and pulse, and you can start to add recode foods in, crowd out the other foods by adding these foods in and, and you start to see and you'll know if this approach is for you by the end of that if you change you know a couple food things over yeah. the course of a week well thank you for making it so easy for people because i think the very person that needs this the most is looking for something that is simple to begin with right if someone's overwhelmed and then yeah. they do an overwhelming program exactly they're most likely not going to have continuation right. so um I, this has been so great with you and um i have these these questions and it's at the center of the emotional and the physical, and really for you also the spiritual. Mm. And, and the first question is, if you were to define this to a friend, uh, because we're all friends here listening anyways, if you were to define emotional intelligence, what does that actually mean to you if someone's emotionally intelligent? Well, you pick up nuance and subtlety. And, uh, the, you know, there's, there's a saying that our energy enters the room before we do. So really it's being able to read and, and understand the energy that's being presented, whether it's your own or other people's, and, and to work with that. What about physical intelligence? You know, most people think it's about moving and exercising in the gym, but, you know, true intelligence when it comes to the physical body, we're always receiving signals from our body. How would you define that, physical intelligence? Well, being able to listen to the signs and symptoms of, that your body's giving you, there's signs, right? And to respond accordingly, giving your body what it needs. And so much of the recode, well, I think having a young child, right? So much of being a good parent in the beginning is just anticipating the child's needs so you can meet them. Okay, he's going to be hungry now. He's going to be tired now. He's going to need exercise, and, right? And, and so you've got to do that for yourself. And that's physical intelligence to keep the body working well. Yeah. And we're, we're just have a lot of demands and responsibilities, this whole adulting thing. And that's the first thing that usually goes is we're not meeting our needs. Do you feel like having your child has reminded you about what true physical and emotional intelligence is? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, having a child changes your life in myriad of ways that you could have never planned on. And seeing what it takes to, for, for him to operate. And as he's in the toddler phase now at 18 months. And so, you know, it's like, it's like living with a little drunk person. He's happy <laughs> one minute and crying the next and wants yeah, this yeah. and wants that. And so it's really seeing, okay, I'll just allow it. Just allow whatever. Is this present for you? Just allow it. Just trying to suppress it. Um, it's, it's definitely, you learn a lot about emotional intelligence in the toddler phase. I'm going to spend the weekend with my young nieces, um, four and six, 
and my nephew is 15 and and I watched them I you know when they were newborns and and just seeing them grow they reminded me about just being just being yeah and I think that's really at the core of most people having the uh, adrenal dysregulation and, and this metabolic chaos and everything else is at some point because of trauma, because of all these things that either are ours or aren't ours, but they're our responsibility. We just forget how to be. Yeah. We forget what it's like to just be in a body and just be a soul inhabiting this world. And, and kids remind us of that, you know, and, well, I, and I sense that from kids, you when you talk about it. Kids um, demand that of us. Yeah. And if you're not present with them, I can, you know, my son, it's, it's changes. Uh, he'll remind me if I'm not being present with him and his whole demeanor changes when I shift and I, I say, thank you for that reminder. And, and I'm present again, but it's a, it's a constant, uh, yeah. it's, it's constant work in progress in a fast paced modern society. So fascinating. Um, I've really enjoyed this. I know people are going to rewind and listen to this again, but where can people find you? And a wellnessforce.com is forward slash recode is where they can get the free course. It's four videos. It's amazing. I went through it myself, you guys. It's awesome. Thank She's you. She's done such a good job. Thank you. Uh, but where can they find you the most? I mean, where can they interact with you? Where are you active? Yeah, the whole journey, the whole journey.com. Um, so we've got, uh, I've got a TV show, Food is Medicine TV, and we're on our fifth season of that now. So basically any health issue or concern that you may have, you can search it on our website and find practical free action steps in a video to go with it. So that's probably the best place. Amazing. And yeah. if you were to look at wellness compared to now versus when you started, mm. how did you see wellness in the past and how do you see wellness now? I mean, how do you define wellness in your life? It's so much more global now, right? Like, how would you define a successful day? Did you, like, how did it start? How present did you feel? You know, how did you breathe, move? What were your interactions like? All of that versus, um, yeah, what you got done in a day. I mean, my personal journey is I don't, I don't tag my value to my productivity anymore like I used to. Um, in terms of my own personal wellness, it's really looking at it globally. But... I think that I've always had these concepts, you know, in floating around in my mind for wellness, but never tied them together so much in this way. And obviously when I started this, I was in my young twenties and now I'm in early forties. And so this spiritual journey that, that, that takes of doing the work and the only way out is through and not being afraid of it, not being afraid to face it. Um, I think that that is such an enormous part of wellness because then you're free of fear for the most part, right? Right. Yeah. Well, thank you for being you. For what you do in this wellness world, there's so many people out there that have opinions and have things for sale and that do things that, you know, they might be coming from a great place, but I sense something in you that I haven't felt for a long time. And that is somebody who's truly embodied the gathering and the application Thank um, you. So thanks for what you do and just the human being that you are in the world. That means a lot. Likewise, Josh. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Hey, thanks for listening to the show, my friend. Everything you learned on this podcast starts with your morning practices. So from over 300 world-class guests, we pulled together six simple yet powerful morning practices down into a 21-minute system guaranteed to increase your vibration and the way that you feel every day. Get this free powerful guide over at wellnessforce.com forward slash m twenty one. And if you love this show, share it with somebody. Share it with somebody that you love or that you care about. You can support the show easily by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes. Just go to wellnessforce.com forward slash review. Or if you're on your phone, just tap it, hit the link in purple that says review this podcast. And the journey does not stop here. We're continuing this discovering process in our private Facebook group over at wellnessforce.com forward slash group. You can be a part of it. You already are. All you have to do is join us at wellnessforce.com forward slash group. And I will welcome you at the door. Now go out into your life and live your life well. And until I see you again real soon, I'm wishing you love and wellness. 